Yeah, excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Sherrod. And uh, I, I guess for for disclosure, we are not boost up customers, but I think after after seeing some of that, maybe we need the we need the demo. So <laughs> I'm I'm excited to talk to you all today. Uh, I'll I'll share how we use insights uh, do do insight driven selling at G two, and I'll I'll share it really across uh, three themes. Uh, so Sherrod, if you move to the next slide, uh, there's three. Those three themes are, are forecasting. How do we really use data to drive forecasts? Um, we actually have, have created some of our, our own internal systems that I think mirror a lot of what, uh, what Sharad just walked through. So we'll, we'll talk through some of that. Uh, the second is coaching. Um, and, and how do we use data to coach? Uh, and, and I think this is, this is really all about helping reps understand what they can do to be better. And, and, and I think reps also appreciate that the data driven angle here uh, is, is that, you know, that helps them hit their number and, and helps them be successful. And then the last thing is automation. And, and I think of automation, automation, you know, probably applies to all three of these, but I think of automation, particularly from a, uh, setting reps up for success perspective uh, in, in making sure we're talking with uh, with the right clients at the right times, as Mike was alluding to earlier. Um, so with that, uh, let's jump into forecasting. So I actually pulled actually pulled a, a graphic that I did not know is going to be in Sherrod section, but uh, when when we think about forecasting it, at G2, we really think uh, good data and good logic equals an, an accurate forecast. Um, and and so you really need you really need three things to build an accurate forecast. The first is just accurate stage data. Like our reps and our managers actually giving an accurate view of where uh, where each opportunity is in the buying cycle. Um, and, and this is so important. The thing that's really important here is that it's consistent. And the, and the reason that the, the accuracy and the consistency of this data is so important is because good model logic is going to work uh, often very similarly to the way this chart is set up. You'll have opportunities that are at a stage of the buying process, and then you'll be able to predict um, based on historicals and based on the trend for those for those opportunities, how likely they are to close in in any given period. Um, and so, to make this a little bit a little bit concrete, when uh, a couple years ago we we missed forecast pretty badly in in a quarter, and we were off by I think twenty percent with under a month to go, and it was. It was a big deal for the company because it's a surprise for the team. It's a surprise for the board. It's you know it was it was a long time ago, but we you know we remember it. <laughs> um, and so we went through and and we created our own process and we built our own model to forecast better. Um, and with that model, we've been we've been typically within five to seven percent of our final bookings forecast for a period, which for us would put us within. Uh, probably two three percent of our our ARR forecast for a period, two months out from from the end of that from the end of that quarter, um, which is really which is really I think I think pretty good. And the way we built the forecast on um, built the forecasting model was exactly off of this logic. We said, okay, if um, if an opportunity is in discovery at this time with X weeks left to go, what is the probability that by the end of this period, it will be, uh, it will be closed one? What is the probability it will be closed lost? What is the probability it will still be, uh, it'll still be open and, and won't have, won't have closed by this period. So I think built very similar logic to what this chart is, is showing, um, now, now we're in a place where we've we've gotten the the team coached on the on the accurate stage data, making sure that the the underlying data that feeds the model is good and consistent. We have the model that works, and, and the next step for us is going to be is going to be likely taking this back to a tool. Now that we really have the logic nailed down, um, and and we have the uh, we have the data in a place that's that's good. So this is this is how we use data for for forecasting. 
Second thing, uh, you go ahead and go ahead and jump forward. Uh, second thing is for is for coaching, and and I think Mike, you had a quote similar to this earlier. Um, but this is one of my favorite my favorite quotes. If we have data, let's look at the data. If we have our opinions, let's go with mine. <laughs> you know, as the CEO of Netscape back in the day, I know Netscape may not be the the most forefront in everybody's mind these days, but uh, I think. Andreessen Horowitz and Firefox are are the remnants of uh, of of Netscape. So the reason I bring this up is because the same thing is true for the CEO. The CEO has this mindset, but the reps on the teams also have this mindset. So if we jump to the next slide, um, and we think about coaching, if I tell a rep, or if one of our sales leaders tells a rep, um, you aren't asking enough questions in your discovery calls, uh, and you're not asking enough questions of your of your clients as they go through the as they go through the through the buying process. The rep is probably going to look at me, or they're going to look at the manager. And if they're an experienced rep and they've been selling for you know five, ten years, they're going to look at us and they're going to say, "Yeah, yeah, that's nice." I like the way I sell. I think I do a good job. Are you attacking me because you don't like me because I missed my number last month or whatever it is? You know, they they might they might take some uh, they might take something from it, but odds are they're going to be a little bit defensive. You know, with data, you don't have to make that claim. When we look at this is actual data from one of our from one of our teams at G two um, on the right side of this page. And you'll see that there are four people who are outliers in how many questions they're asking in a call. Um, the, these are all people who are on the same team uh, for, for the last like 12 months. Of those four people who are outliers who are asking well more questions, one was recently promoted to manager in the last six months. One was our top rep uh, for the whole segment last year. And then the third is our top rep for, or I guess the, the fourth uh, is the top rep for that segment this year. And so I can go to a rep and I can say, hey, look, like, you know, Joe, Sally, whoever it is, they're crushing it. Um, and look at what they're doing. They're asking way more questions what do you think about that? Like, how can we change your how can we change your style? Is there is there something that they're doing that's different? And I can point them in that direction and and not say, hey, like you're not asking enough questions, but actually show them the data that says if they if they ask these if they if they follow more of this behavior, they'll be more successful. And here I'm showing call data, uh, and there's there's a, a whole list of of call data you can use. Uh, but you can do the same thing with ac activity data. You can do the same thing with op data. Like how long are people leaving opportunities in stages? Are they, you know, are they good at getting into opportunities but slow to close? You know, you can do the same thing with any type of data and really uh, champion the leaders and, and set reps up uh, to, to emulate the best behaviors in a data-driven way. You know, this is very interesting, uh, Cameron. Um, when we started boost up several years ago one of our hypotheses or one of the things one of our messaging points was hey look data will make your co coaching conversations and your one-on-ones go easy because then you don't come across as you know attacking attacking or just brutally inspecting the rap it is really data provides a neutral language and a and a sort of a common starting point to to improve um and, and it's really hard to see that that is actually starting to you know, take more more mainstream because you're right. Data is that neutralizer, and it really changes the conversation to, hey, let's improve together. And you know, here's the comparison. Here's what others are doing right. Um, and you, you know, you go away from the world of opinions and you know, uh, defensive behavior and such. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm highlighting call data here, but you see you see the same thing. Our our managers these days try to make every forecasting conversation a coaching conversation because they can you know they can they can use the the forecast data as well to say hey like this has been in you know it's been in commit or whatever it's it's been in for four weeks 
why is it not progressing? What have we done? Like, let's talk through it. And so, you know, that that same data can be used can be used across uh, across instances too. So excellent. I think I have one more. I don't know if we have time for for one more quick. One more we do. Quick. We have five more minutes. So yeah, great. Um. So so last 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 point I wanted to make, and and this has actually been the most intriguing to me. And some of this is may sound a little bit G two specific, but I actually think it's generalizable for just about any company. Is I think when a lot of people in sales think about, uh, at least this has been my experience. A lot of the a lot of the folks at at G two and a lot of the Frankly, a lot of the people who have sold me sold me sales software have have made the point uh, or have have talked about data and they've talked about data from deal cycles and they've talked about data from what the reps are doing and what the interaction with the with the buyer is. Um, but one thing we found is there's a there's a huge amount of proprietary data both from those interactions and otherwise that we're able to leverage at G two to reach out to our uh, to reach out to our clients in a better way. So I've included a couple examples here. One uh, is a customer adoption example. Integrations are really important for G2. We, we pass G2 data through, through integrations and that's how people often use our product. Um, we have notifications set up to alert our reps if an integration breaks. So rather than a client having to reach out to say, hey, I have this challenge with your product. Can you set me up with support? Or even worse, not recognizing that they have the challenge with our product. Our rep will instead get pinged to say, hey, the integration broke. You should reach out to the client. And by the way, here is your sales engagement tool sequence so that all you have to do is hit send, uh, maybe customize a little bit, but just hit send and it will alert them that the integration is broken and offer to help support. Um, we have the same thing. We use the same thing for upsell, for example. So G2 rankings of software, everybody wants to be top right. If you are, if you are top right, um, and, and if you're, a, if one of your, if you're a, I guess a, a retention rep on our side and one of your one of your clients uh, moves up to the top right of the quadrant or becomes a leader, we can automatically ping our rep to have them reach out to the client to say, congrats, you're now winning in your category. Um, you know, you're a leader like Boost Up is. Are you interested in G2 content, for example? And it's a very like light touch, elegant, uh, timely way for our reps to stay in touch with clients and they don't have to think about it. And, and where this is great is it, it leads to more upsell, it leads to better attention, but it also means that instead of our reps being able to manage 50 accounts, they could manage 100 accounts. Or in the future, the hope is to, to get to the point where they can manage 300 or 400 and a lot of the, a lot of the easy communication is automated and they really just focus on uh, the value add and the relationship. Um, so it's a huge, it's a huge productivity boost, and it also makes the interactions between our teams and our and our clients much better. 